So in this tutorial, I just wanted to go over how to set up drag and drop with a lister. So today I set up a system where you drop a row from a lister and it generates a queue and passes whatever data you have available. So right now it just assigns the name of the queue, but the same principles will apply to the rest of the data that I'll need. So for the tutorial, what we'll do is we'll create a lister and we will drag in a row into this 3D scene and it will duplicate our geometry and we'll assign a texture to the movie file in. So I have a couple things laid out. I have an extension, I have a geometry, a camera, a whole render scene here and a couple lights. So it's important here to have the, you want the ortho width, we're just doing an ortho, orthographic camera, it's going to be a lot easier. So we want an ortho width of the parent width, as well as the render to be the same. It's going to be a little easier to set this up that way. And the geo, I just have it rotating randomly. Inside of that, I just have a movie file in with a material. What we'll do is create a lister. There are a few things you have to do to get set up with the lister. Uh, first, you'll go to drag and drop and then use legacy drag system. You don't have to change anything else. And then you'll come in and under, well, first turn off auto define columns and then under edit column definitions, we need to change the draggable to one. You can turn, close that. All right, so the way you know that you did it right is if you click it and there's an arrow, then you know that it's fine. So first thing, uh, now that we have the lister set up right, we'll come into the container here that you're gonna use. Um, and then I guess I already did, but the, you wanna assign what you will call your drop script. Drop script, uh, come in here and create a script. And we'll again just call it drop script and then extension dot scene dot drop. And then args. Um, so the args, so the args get automatically passed by touch designer and the way you can find out what is actually being passed is by you can open up a lot of these components and you can take a look at like the tree lister i think has one uh you can come in here and it'll actually show you the sys drag you know and then press this button so you come in here and it tells you, it just tells you what is being passed. So you can just close this out. And I already cut pasted it in, but you know, just so you could see. Okay, so now we're gonna start writing some of this code here. So we'll create our drop method self and then arcs. So we know we need the base name and then we're also going to need the drop name. So what we'll do with that is we need to make a path to the lister that we dropped from. So what we're going to do is say lister path equals op arg six plus up, 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 plus args zero. So that's going to be our path to the lister. And just to confirm that that's actually right, we will we'll open this. And so now we have the path to the lister. So the next thing we need to do is go back into here. And now that we have the lister path, we're going to create the, we're going to grab the row object from the lister. So we'll say lister rows 
equals lister path uh, dot selected row objects. And that's straight from the documentation. So, you know, we know we'll be able to retrieve, we could just do print uh, lister rows and we'll also wrong wrong button where is my text port okay so now we'll grab the rows from the lister so the first row is the file name and next one is the file path and so we're going to use the file path to assign the material so the first thing the next thing we'll have to do is just create a simple add item kind of uh, script so we'll do add add geo so we'll say um, add geo and then we'll do texture path something like that so template equals self dot my op dot op geo one so that's what we're going to be copying and then we'll say self dot my op dot copy template name equals geo one so real quick we can just do my op dot uh, node x or node y at my op the, we need to return that so new op equals so new op dot node x equals new op dot digits times 200 how about that all right so that'll get our position and so we need to now create the texture path so now we have the new op here so new op dot op we know that we have in here a geo1 movie file in we need to change that path there so the parameter is file so new op uh, dot movie file in dot par dot file equals texture path yeah just texture path that's what we'll do so then we know that we need to pass in just the path. So we'll say for i in lister rows, the current texture is i uh, one, right? And then, so we'll say self dot add geo cur texture. We will see if that works. Um, so pull up our text port and let's see, geo two. So we created a copy of our, our geo and I guess it's kind of in a weird spot, but so yeah, they're, they're gonna be going all over. Oh, because I <laughs> said node X and I meant node Y. So, and we'll do a negative 200 on that. So we'll come back here and delete that. And just, now we have, uh, and these just kind of have random values for the rotation and stuff. So camera, um, we'll just come in here and set the look to be null background. Basically, now what we want to do is, you know, this is not exactly really useful here, you know, everything going into the center. So, you know, what we're going to do is drag it into the location of the mouse. Um, and that really just entails converting your UV mouse position to world space. Um, so won't talk about that too much here, but um, I have that uv space to world space function in my timeline so you can check it out on the repo um, but what we will do is use it here and we'll go uh, get position and 
Um, so first we need to get the UV position. So UV equals, um, what is it? Self dot myop dot dot um, panel dot inside U self dot myop dot panel dot inside V. And then we'll take those world space pose equals self dot UV space to world space and pass in this U equals U uh, V equals V. And so all this is doing is taking our zero to one space. So zero to one, zero to one space and converting it to our world space. Um, and you know, there are a lot of functions you can find online uh, to, to actually achieve this. Um, so let's see. So just to confirm, we'll do world space pose and come back to touch and uh, check out. When we drag in our item, we get our world space position there. So then what we need to do is assign this position to our geo. So new op dot par dot tx uh, equals new pose dot x, uh, new op dot par dot ty equals new pose dot y. Um, we don't really care about the Z, I guess, for now. So I think that should be good. So now we can, yeah, so now we drop in our our objects here, wherever our mouse is. All right, so that's really it. We can now retrieve data from our lister and use it to assign parameters to geometry in a 3D scene. If you liked the tutorial and want to see more, feel free to subscribe as I'll be creating many more as I continue development of this timeline system.